Hello everyone and welcome to Jumper Man Tech where we specialize in HVAC but do everything DIY. Today we have a service call for a walk-in garbage room. Thank you to everyone tuning in to Jumper Man Tech. So right here we have a frozen over evaporator. This is a walk-in box style of unit but it's being used for air conditioning for a garbage room. Power is currently off as it defrosts, but I already noticed something from the jump. This fan spins, although I feel a little bit of resistance, but it spins. This one, solid, stuck. This motor has to be changed. There's a good reason that, or a good chance that the reason that this froze over is because of this fan. So if we don't have both fans running and the compressor's running, we're gonna ice up. Just got approval to change this motor. And since this one is probably gonna be on its way out soon, we're gonna change both. So the idea here is to pull out one, try to match it at the shop, and we'll go ahead and pick up two motors and come back to replace it. Oh, this one, I wanna try to spin the shaft and look at this. Gone. Got some tie wraps back down there let's cut those free and we could actually just unplug this one so that's, so that's perfect and then we take out these four nuts we should be able to pull this whole thing out with this this nut driver it's amazing so we got these four nuts let's take those out we're gonna take the whole motor with the bracket get in there cut that last tie wrap all right should be good there this one has a plug in it looks like okay there we go let's get that that's good enough the other one we already know, we only need one, it's identical. So we need two setups like that. I was able to track down two of these motors. That's a beautiful thing. Let's begin rebuilding the first one. There's a new motor. You gotta pull off this blade and use the same bracket that's here. Don't have sandpaper on me. Hopefully this comes off easier when I have to get it. Proper way is to sand this down, loosen up the screw, then slide this out. I'm gonna take our Allen key, loosen this up. Oh boy, that thing is on there. All right, that definitely loosened it. Let's back it out a little more. I have a feeling this is gonna be hard to take out. This thing is super rusted, but you never know. Let's see, we just slide it out. That's a beautiful thing. All right, now we got this out. Make sure we keep it in the same way. We have four nuts. We're gonna back those out. And once again, we're gonna use this nut driver. It's multi-bit, so you can find, let's find the right size. That's the one. So we're gonna take out one, loosen that. Loosen it, loosen it, and loosen it. I do some of the, the endings by hand because sometimes I just get stuck inside here. So I don't want that happening. So let's back them out. Let's pop that out. right there and we're gonna want the motor to go on exactly the same 
So that's kind of the same setup. Let's get that on there. Beautiful. Then we can put on the four nuts and tighten it down. All right. So we're just tightening these down. Everything was the same size. So that's perfect. When I do stuff like this, tighter one, then I do the one on the opposite side. So I cross them. That's nice and even. And from here, we could put the blade back on. Again, what you would want to do is actually sand this down before you put it on. Let's just make sure this shaft is good. All right, before I put this on, I'm gonna clean the blade, but where we have the stopping screw, you want that to line up with the flat part of the motor. So when you tighten that down, it locks in there and it's not gonna go anywhere. Let's clean this up real quick. All right, that looks a lot better. So let's line this up with the flat part and let's tighten it down. Fan blade is not all the way down so it doesn't scratch. I'm just gonna lift it up a little bit and give it a light tight tighten down. So when we get to the unit, we can give it a better adjustment. But pretty much, this is how you change it. You're gonna put this back, tighten up the four nuts, and connect that to wires. This is a 115 volt motor. So this one still needs to defrost and take apart. But as far as this one, tiny little piece here but that's pretty much gone so we can start by putting this one in i just wonder if it'll clip in to the same clip as far as this but i don't think so let me see something if it does that would be great you know what it actually went in that actually might work. If not, you would have to splice it. And then this one. Let's get it in. Get it in there. Careful not to destroy the coil. And now we're gonna line this up. The bracket. What's going on? And the fourth one. Oh, the top popped out. So now I can hold this and put these nuts back on. Tighten it down. Beautiful. All right. It's nice and tight. And this one's pretty much ready to go. Next step I gotta do is actually pull this one out and let this thing fully defrost. But as far as this one, it's done. Put the cover back on, tighten that down, and we should be good. But before I pull this one out, I want to make sure that the blades is kind of lined up to the right spot. And you know what? I can go one maybe a little bit more, but we're pretty much adjusted here. Make sure it's nice and tight. Yeah, nice and tight. Going nowhere. This thing is pretty much defrosted. I'm just gonna tighten down all these. I got it in. Got the new motor there. And let's start closing this thing up. And give it a start up. It says on the bottom of this unit that it's using 404A. And this thing was just a block of ice a few hours ago. So notice that motor it was bad. So change both. Start it up and we're gonna check pressure, see what's going on. Let's connect the power. Everything very simple. This connection does work, 
but it's not the same one. And I feel like it's too easy to take apart. I think we're better off splicing this right now. I want to save. I want to save connection. I don't want to come back here saying this thing ain't running. Everything is looking good and wired. Let's just go ahead and put these covers back on. I'm gonna tighten down these little nuts. Any time already. All right, <clears throat> let's get this on. How did the compressor start? Started. The first time it started, it shut off. Might have been like a low pressure start. It said it's 404A. Let's see what kind of pressures we got. It's an air cooled unit, of course. It's a bit chilly right now. But that back pressure is at above 50 and we're getting up to 200 now. So I don't think we have any gas issues considering it was frozen. It must have just been the fans. Let's make sure the fans are running. All right, fans are running. It sounds nice and smooth in here. I already feel the cold. Let's go ahead and close this door. All right, so the back pressure went down a little bit, but that's because the room got a little colder. I closed the room. 40, 200, it said it was 404A. That seems normal. Here's the suction line. What's good is that it's not icing up. It was a complete block of ice from the unit up to the condensing unit, the indoor unit to the outdoor unit, completely. So it's not icing up. Let's let this run a little bit and make sure that we satisfy on temperature. It's only set to 55 degrees in there because they're actually using it as an air conditioner. All right, not sure if you guys can see, but we're at 58.8 degrees and we only want 55 in here. So the, everything came down real quick. Suction line is not freezing. Coil is not freezing. So considering it's been coming down so quick, this should satisfy within a couple minutes. And I'm pretty sure it's not gonna be a block of ice by then. So, that was the issue. That one fan motor not running and the other one on its way out, we weren't moving good air. Blades were a little dirty, but it's really was the bad fan motor. If anyone found this video interesting or helpful, please drop a like, comment, subscribe as I come out with new videos every week. And I'll catch you all next time.